semi-dreadnoughts. What are they, and how do you actually identify one compared to a more traditional pre-dreadnought? That question is actually more complicated than it may appear, not least because semi-dreadnought is something of a weird classification in the first place. The distinction between a dreadnought, all big guns, and a pre-dreadnought, big guns and lots of very smaller guns, is fairly easy to identify. So, too, is the question of a super dreadnought compared to a regular dreadnought. That's generally regarded as the jump in displacement and size that came along with increasing past the 12-inch gun caliber. But the semi-dreadnought, hmm, that's a more difficult one to explain. It seems simple, but it's not as simple as you would think. To start, let's look at the three classes most commonly identified as semi-dreadnoughts. The French Danton, the Japanese Satsuma, and the Austro-Hungarian Radetzky? These three ships are the ones that generally jump to the fore when discussing this topic, and for good reason. They're the archetypal examples in a lot of ways. Now, they're not the only examples, as we'll get into, but they're certainly the ones people think about. All three have similar features, and give a good insight into what makes a semi-dreadnought differ from a traditional pre-dreadnought. For those asking what those features are, well, the most common differentiation between the different pre-dreadnought types is the firepower. Here, you need to look at what preceded the semi-dreadnoughts and what made them different from their predecessors. As covered multiple times at this point, as a general rule, pre-dreadnoughts would feature two turrets with heavy guns and then a mixed battery of smaller guns and casemates or the odd turret, alongside the broadside. From the very first to the very last, this was generally how the ships were designed. Of course, calibers would vary between ships and navies, but the general design concept was pretty closely followed. Just as a general and most common example, ships with 12-inch guns in the bow and stern turrets, a heavy secondary battery of 6-inch guns, and a lighter battery of... 3-inch tertiary guns. Again, details and caliber can vary, but that's generally how it would look. You could see it go higher and have 8-inch secondaries and 6-inch tertiary guns with yet more smaller caliber guns. It just really depends on the Navy. This kind of design had its advantages in the day when big guns were slow, ponderous beasts that could only be fired rarely and carefully. You wanted to have an ability to fire faster if someone got close to you, for example. However, as bigger guns grew faster firing, you begin to see the shift towards what would become dreadnoughts. The all-big gun design was not a sudden evolution. It was a gradual move in that direction as smaller guns became less effective, as bigger guns fired faster, and as ranges in gunfights extended out further. Basically, all major navies were moving there, and in quite a few cases could have been there sooner than they historically were, if not for the fact that there was an argument for what the British called the mixed caliber battleship. The jump to an all big gun ship was a massive one to undertake without knowing, in advance, if it truly had any advantage to justify the cost. A ship with intermediate caliber, 8 to 10 inch roughly, Secondary supporting the big guns, that should be investigated first to identify the usefulness of it, or so the logic went. This is where you see semi-dreadnoughts come in, or, to borrow British terminology again, intermediate dreadnoughts. The key feature of these ships was in having the traditional pre-dreadnought gun layout with the two turrets with big guns, but ditching the smaller caliber guns in favor of a heavy, if not full-on big gun, intermediate battery. This is not to say they got rid of the 6-inch guns entirely, mind you. These heavy guns, typically in the range of 9 to 10-inch in caliber, would be mounted in turrets, much as the main battery was, though this was alongside the broadside and wing turrets, 
This would, in theory, increase the firepower of a battleship dramatically while not needing the cost or size increase of a jump to all big guns. For navies that couldn't afford the expense of larger ships or larger docks for the ships, it made a certain amount of sense at the time. That was the theory, though in the case of Satsuma, it was actually just because Japan couldn't afford to build the ship to her original design, which would have been an all-big gun ship. So she's kind of an odd one out here. This increase in secondary firepower is the defining feature of semi-dreadnoughts in comparison to earlier battleships. While some of these ships were faster than earlier pre-dreadnoughts, or had heavier armor, or were different in how they looked, the real difference was always the use of heavier secondaries and turret mountings. That's certainly the case for all of the flagship classes listed here. Danton had six twin turrets with 9.4 inch guns, Radetsky had eight 9.4 inch guns and twin turrets, and Satsuma was the largest with no fewer than 12 10 inch guns and twin turrets. It should be noted as well that these three ships still maintained a tertiary battery of varying calibers from 3 to 6 inches. So, with all that out of the way, you have the thing that answers the question, yeah? A semi-dreadnought is a battleship with big guns and slightly smaller, but still big, secondaries. This is true. The problem is that you tend to see some division on what qualifies as a semi-dreadnought. Just for an easy example, are the American pre-dreadnoughts also semi-dreadnoughts? These ships had heavy intermediate batteries and turrets, in their case using 8-inch guns. That's what a semi-dreadnought is, right? But then you have them differing in detail and where things get interesting. As early as the Indiana class, you're seeing 8-inch guns and wing turrets, creating an intermediate battery albeit on extremely small ships that are mostly for coastal defense. It doesn't change the fact, though, that it's still a heavy intermediate battery, which is the defining characteristic of a semi-dreadnought. But no one is going to be calling the Indiana class semi-dreadnoughts. Not that I've seen, anyway. The Connecticut class, in turn, had the traditional, as much as you can call it such, semi-dreadnought layout with 8-inchers in twin wing turreted mounts but you also have a nearly as heavy secondary battery of 7-inch guns and casemates, making them some weird mix of regular pre-dreadnoughts and semi-dreadnoughts. So are these ships semi-dreadnoughts? I've seen them called such, but nowhere near as universally as the archetypal classes. For their turn, the last class of Russian pre-dreadnoughts had a mixed mounting system for their intermediate battery. Turrets and casemates though all of the guns were the same 8-inch caliber. Much as the American ships, they're sometimes called semi-dreadnoughts, sometimes not. There are other examples I could go through here, but the final one I'll go with is the British Lord Nelson, the last of their pre-dreadnoughts. Remember the bit earlier about intermediate caliber ships needing to be tested before jumping right to all big guns? That's the entire reason for the existence of the Lord Nelsons. British designers were pushing for something akin to Dreadnought before the Lord Nelsons were even designed. Their hand was forced, however, leading to attempting a ship with a heavy intermediate battery first. Once more, I'm simplifying things, and we'll go into more detail when I actually do an overview on the Lord Nelsons. The point is, this leaves us with ships that fit the semi-Dreadnought model perfectly. An incredibly heavy intermediate battery of 9.2 inch guns and wing turrets. That's exactly in line with the other semi-dreadnoughts noted previously. But yet, I rarely see the title attached to these ships. That's not always the case, but quite often I just see them called pre-dreadnoughts in comparison to, say, Satsuma, which is almost always called a semi-dreadnought. That's really the point of this video. A semi-dreadnought is a subclass of a pre-dreadnought. There's certainly enough differences to justify calling them differently from earlier designs, but at the same time, there's not really enough difference to call them an entirely different class like you do with dreadnoughts. If I had to say it, there's something akin to super-dreadnoughts, honestly. 
a larger and more powerful version of the base design type, but still following more or less the same concept. A super dreadnought is a dreadnought with an increase in displacement due to bigger gun calibers and heavier armor. A semi-dreadnought is a pre-dreadnought with an intermediate battery in turrets instead of a traditional secondary battery in casemates. It's the same concept, just bigger. So if someone ever asks you what a semi-dreadnought is, for some reason, just tell them it's a variation of a pre-dreadnought, one with a heavy intermediate battery to go along with the big main guns. Just expect to be laughed at if you say the Indiana class is one just because she had an intermediate battery.